In this video, we are going to look at using a glass pipette. Uh, the first thing that we need to do when we're using a pipette is, first of all, we have to select the one that we need. Um, so there are a few different types of, uh, of uh, let's just say, glass pipettes. Um, here we have what's called a uh, volumetric, which has this uh, characteristic or distinctive, distinctive uh, bulge in the middle. And that has only one calibration line you can see here, and that's to deliver just one specific volume, and it's written on the side, that's 5 mLs. And that's when we need very high accuracy, for example, for reagent or uh, QC or standard preparation. Okay, the other two that we have are uh, variable volume. This is a uh, serological. And this is a 5 ml serological, and you can see that it starts here at zero, goes one, two, three, four, and then there's no five. Okay, on the side it says this is a 5 ml. Uh, so basically what that means is if you want five mLs delivered, you take it up to zero, and then you let it go all the way through the tip. Now, that's a little bit strange that if you want five, you go to zero, and um, I'll show you another type of pipette here. Um, this is a plastic disposable pipette. I kind of hate the idea of disposable that you would throw uh, every time you use one of these things that you would throw it away because uh, the glass ones we can uh, wash and uh, use over and over again. But on this one, you can see just like with the glass one, it does, this is a 10 ml and it goes all the way to zero and down to nine and that tells me that if I want 10, I have to take it up to zero. But uh, I can also turn it, and it has another numbering system where if I need 10, here I take it up to 10. All right, another type of, uh, similar to the uh, serological, is the uh, more pipette, where you can deliver different volumes, and uh, this is a 5 ml. And, um, but what's different about this one is that on the uh, serological, <coughs> excuse me, the last number was 4, and we delivered what was in the tip. Now with this uh, pipette more, we only, if we need five, we take it up to zero, and then we stop at number five. Okay, um, just a couple of things about the markings on these pipettes. Uh, there, I'm not gonna go talk about all of them. Really, I just wanna talk about a couple of them. Uh, on the top of pipettes, you're going to find uh, different uh, shapes and colors. And these shapes tell us about information about the pipette, about, for example, size, right? Um, but another thing that we're looking for uh, is whether there is a ring around the top. And this one, it's a little bit faint, but there's this etched ring that goes all the way around the top of the uh, pipette. And on this uh, disposable one, there are two colored red rings that go all the way around. And what these tell us is that these pipettes need to be uh, blown out. So don't be confused when you see a pipette that has these types of markings, you know, shapes or colors, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this does not mean that this pipette is to be blown out. If it's to be blown out, the etched ring or the colored ring should go all the way around the top. All right, so let's go ahead here and um, go through the procedure of uh, pipetting. So I want to deliver 5 mLs of my blue liquid here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the tip under the surface of the liquid. And we don't want it to be touching the side like this when we're drying up, and we want to have it vertical. All right, so what I'm gonna use, this is my bulb. You, we don't, and once upon a time, uh, people used to mouth pipe at, which just seems a little bit crazy, but, um, but uh, nowadays we're using either, you know, suction devices like these or electric suction devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep the tip underneath to put this on top, let's see here, let me tilt my camera so we can get that part of it in. So I'm going to draw up the liquid until it goes past 
the desired volume. And in this case, that desired, vol desired volume is zero. And what I need to do is I need to quickly take this off and get my finger on the top. Now, in my procedure, it says use your index finger, but uh, I also see students using their thumbs, and well, not just students, uh, other lab techs using their thumbs. So really, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever works for you and allows you to perform this procedure, that's fine. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've taken it out. Now what I need to do is I'm gonna take a Kim wipe and in a downward motion, I'm going to wipe off the excess liquid around the outside of the, uh, of the pipette. All right, now uh, what I need to do is I need to get it to the desired volume, which is zero. So I need to line up the meniscus. Now the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus is what uh, we use to, um, to line up with the, like for example here, I'm going to line it up with zero. And this is something that is better done kind of at eye level. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick this up a little bit so it's a little bit closer to my eye. And I'm just going to adjust my finger. Okay, this is something that definitely takes some practice. Okay, there, I've got it. So the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus is directly at the bottom or is that is the bottom of the meniscus, meniscus is lined up with zero, so I'm ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's transfer this to the uh, vessel that we want to pipette into, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it on the side here, and I'm just going to take my finger off and just let it go. All right, now it's done, and I can see in the bottom that there's a little bit of liquid left in there. Now, looking at the top of this pipette, you can see here on the top that there's this frosted band. So that means that I need to take my bulb and just do a squeeze and blow out the rest of that liquid. Okay, that's it. That's all we need to know about... Uh, pipetting with uh, glass serological more or volumetric pipettes.